All right, it's been a couple weeks since degoogling my phone, and I've been using it as my main daily driver. So every single day, my phone on Graphene OS with no Google services at all, not a Google account tied to it, nothing on Google. I've done it for a full two weeks now. I gotta tell you, there's some good and there's some bad. The good, obviously. Let's go over that first. The best thing about it right now is my battery life. I can go almost a full week without charging my cell phone. That means, you know, there's no GPS tracking, all that. I've gone onto like myactivity.google.com, looked at all the places that it had registered in the past, and well, <laughs> it's nothing. There's nothing. There's not a trace of me anywhere. So definitely, of course, it is degoogled, which is fantastic. Uh, however, it's not without downsides. You got battery, you got privacy, you got security. What about the bad? What goes with that? Do I have any side effects from, uh, let's say, uh, not having the apps that have errors and those types of things? Really? Those apps have caused almost no side effects for me. Very, very little side effects, I should say. Uh, I do have notification problems with uh, getting those ones that have the error messages of Google services. There is issues with the reliability of those notifications. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting those uh, notifications, which is fine. I'm not a big notifications guy. I hate notifications. I think they're just productivity killers and you should never have them. But there's times where that is nice, like, you know, like your, your little smart doorbell when someone's at the doorbell and someone hits it. You kind of want to get notified when that happens. I don't. So there are some notifications that are good that just simply don't work on the degoogled experience. That one's kind of a con, but not, uh, not so much so I'd go back to Google. However, this next one is a bigger con, and that is... Google Maps, and Google Maps is fantastic. If you haven't done much with Google Maps, it's it's like going back 10, 15 years. You remember getting on like MapQuest and all those other map sites and mapping out where you're going. And yeah, that's nice. Having just in your pocket at all times, hey, this is where I'm at. Oh, hey, make sure you don't go up here because um, somebody's in town and they've shut down this freeway or whatever it might be. <sighs> well, I got stuck in traffic the other day where Google might have notified me, hey, you might want to take an alternate route. Uh, and then just simply going to places. Like I remember I had to go to a new restaurant and I just simply could not find that restaurant very well using the other maps. I got there and it was fine but it would have been much more seamless experience if I was using Google Maps. So what about the other things? Oh, well, pretty much anything with Google in front of it, you just don't realize how involved they are with your life, whether it be Google Keep, you know, if you use it for notes, whether it be just YouTube in general. Like uh, I've been using YouTube alternative apps but I miss going into like my analytics. I miss seeing my comments. I miss seeing a lot of the stuff that I use. I would, I would get in there like waiting around and just be like, oh, let me answer some comments. Not having it tied to a Google account, I can't do that on my mobile phone anymore. And I miss that. It's a, it's a double-edged sword, mind you, because I no longer can do it, therefore I don't waste time doing it. So that's good, but at the same time, I do miss it. Uh, <laughs> and then finally, Really the biggest Google product that I miss the most is Android Auto. Now, Android Auto is really interesting just because I have an Android Auto deck on my car. I, I custom installed this deck. I can plug up my phone. It would integrate with GPS, my, my music, whatever it might be going on my phone. It would show on my car. I could actually just hit speaker on my car and say, hey, play this song, and it would play it. Uh, there's a lot of customized and just the effortless things that would happen automatically by using Google services and Android Auto, that was just fantastic. But, <sighs> I can't do that because I've de-Googled my phone, no Google services, and that's it. I honestly thought there'd be a lot more cons here. And I could 
do without Google 100% now, which is fantastic. You know, there is no more Google and I could continue on this road. But really the end question here is, will I? And the answer to this question is simply, I've thought long and hard about it these last couple weeks. It does the privacy and security that I get with a de-Google phone, is it worth the sacrifices I make, the conveniences that I no longer have? And the answer to for me, because of what I do on YouTube, the things I have in my life, for me, it's probably not worth it. Because I'm looking at this and I'm like, Ugh. I'm sacrificing a lot of the YouTube engagement and that whether I like it or not, I think hurts this channel. I think honestly, me not doing as many comments because I don't have it on my phone does hurt my business as a whole. And then also you have other aspects that are difficult as well with uh, the convenience aspect. Uh, what happens if we go out of town or something like that? Obviously we're not going on any vacations or anything, but uh, if we do eventually go on that, what happens if I'm in a place and I really need a good navigation? That doesn't really happen well with a de-Googled experience. And I don't know if I can sacrifice that. So going from here, I think I'm going to go ahead and ditch my Graphene OS. I'm going to go to probably a Lineage OS. I'm still going to do Google Apps, but I think trying like a Pico experience, something that's very, very minimal Google services. Not so intrusive, not doing like the full experience, but I wanna see how much of these things I have to install really to get to the point where I'm really happy with the installation. I don't know what that looks like. As far as my YouTube goes, I think easily getting that installed with minimal uh, Google services, I think is pretty easy. Android Auto though, there's a lot of speech customization and integration that goes into that. I don't know how many services I need to install. So my next step here is to basically wipe out my phone again. We're gonna go Lineage OS this time. It's not as secure, it's not as uh, privacy oriented as Graphene OS, but I think at the end of the day, it's gonna be a better experience uh, because I'll be able to get a lot of these cons that I just talked about off the list, pretty much all of them. And it's not quite as bad as going and buying a phone and having all that crap on it, but uh, it still definitely has Google services. So I'm gonna try and disable as many like location tracking and things that I really don't like. I'm gonna try and basically hide that from Google and then still be able to use some of the Google services. How much of that? I don't know. I'm obviously giving up some security and privacy by doing this, but it's something that I have to do. Uh, just because I, I don't think I can live without those things. Or I, I could probably live without them, but it's definitely something that's just not as convenient. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I am just wondering, what, what do you do? Do you, do you do anything other than just ripping out all the bloatware on your phone? Do you do the custom ROM approach like I'm doing? Uh, I know I'm personally looking forward to Linux phones. Linux phones would fix all of this. You have a cohesive uh, e ecosystem that would be very, very good. But we're just not quite there yet. So with that, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.